All right, I got Eddie back. So here comes a ramble and a stream of consciousness. All right, YouTubers. We're in Cousin Eddie. He has a rebuilt transmission now. It's one of those things, like I said to the guy, it's kind of exciting and depressing at the same time. Glad to have him back. Wasn't happy to spend the money, but... Credit card said okay, so it's all good. I'm gonna spend a few days probably being very uh, concerned and wondering about things, you know. After something like this, you get to wondering. But uh, I'll get to rambling here in a second. Okay, so seems to be I'm driving 65, seems to be driving fine. I'll let my head get around. You know listening and wondering and all that kind of stuff but seems pretty good um, estimates everybody had told me was oh well first we'll say what went wrong because when I was talking to the guy I asked him and I asked him again today all right was I stupid did I miss something should I have noticed a warning sign and he said no I don't really think from what I can tell, you would have got a warning sign. But um, the torque converter went. So when that went, apparently it went bad. And it it chopped everything up. It was everywhere. So, so it was a transmission rebuild. And most everybody I had heard said, you know, 15, 16, 1800 bucks, somewhere in that round. Uh, but just so you know, if you have like a 99 Dodge and you need to rebuild the transmission, about 1650 bucks is what I just spent. So, um, not thrilled about having to spend that much money, but it was a lot cheaper than going the route of 3500 for like a Jasper rebuild kind of thing. So, it's driving great at 65 here. I don't hear smell, I, I, you know, I'm sure it's fixed, it's just in your mind, you know. But I haven't, I haven't driven him in quite some time, it's, it's been almost a month, which is pretty difficult, and he needs a bath, so that's going to be in here. And in a couple days, we're packing up and we're heading on a trip, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been almost a month because it sat at my uh, my mechanic that I always go to. It sat there because I'd gone on a trip. It sat there for a while, and then he finally said, I can't do it. So, yeah, the delay got a little bit long. And, and being honest, it was supposed to be done two days ago, and he said he got it all, all put together and did the test drives and everything like that, and he wasn't happy with it. So he took it back off and he fixed a couple things. He said he didn't like third gear the way it sounded to him. So he took it back off and uh, two days later now, he's happy. I'm, you know, I don't want to spend the money, but I'm happy. And I've also said a lot of times, you know, this might be the situation where somebody goes, there's no way I want to buy something used because stuff like this will happen. Well, for me, I've had Eddie about five years now, and this is, we'll call this major, you know, a transmission rebuild, that's major. And all I've really had, I've had no problems with the leisure travel portion of this vehicle. <laughs> but the Dodge part, I had the water pump go bad, and I've had to replace some suspension stuff, which, you know, this is a 99 and it's 2017, barely. It's almost 18. So even with this 1600 bucks into the transmission, when I paid 15 grand for it, and five years later, I still think I'm way ahead of the game because I could sell it today, which I'm not gonna, so don't, don't anybody ask, because I know there's some fans of Cousin Eddie out there. Um, I could sell it and I could recoup every penny I've put into it, easily. 
I look online and I see I see ones with more mileage with with a lesser setup going for more than this one goes. And then you also talk to people that they get a little irritated that something this old still holds its value. Well, it's just because how much the brand new ones cost, you know? If you were buying a brand new one for 35, 40, 50 grand, then yeah, this will be way overpriced. But when you're in 100 grand for most Class Bs now, you know, pretty close to 100, 100 grand in most of them, these are still a bargain, unfortunately. I think everything's running pretty well. I'm listening to see if it sounds different. And maybe, maybe it does. A little lower pitch, I don't know. It's driving fine. All right, another break. So, yay! Eddie's back. I'm actually happy and relieved. I'm wondering where that sun's hitting the camera, though. Um, I've changed speeds a few times. I ran them up to about 75. Everything seems fine. And uh, it's just weird because I haven't driven them in a while. Been in the car so much more. Such a relief. And again, I, and I don't know what I've said and haven't said. Because I, it's kind of funny because I'm thinking back to when I first got this RV, and you know I just spent a lot of money, so there's not the same excitement as when I bought it, but I, I'm remembering that excitement to when I bought them, you know, and I drove from Ohio out to um, Missouri. I, I went like 600 miles to pick up Eddie, so I'm kind of reliving that and. And really glad to have him back. These things happen. Stay patient when you can. Stay calm if you can. Because although I think I do much better now than years ago, calm wasn't my thing at all. <laughs> but I think I did pretty good this time. Overall. I had some moments, you know, when you start realizing that this is going to cost a little bit of money that you weren't planning on, this too shall pass. And it's the price of doing this, you know? So hopefully now, I never have to worry about this again. And I would think, I would think that it's going to take me probably a trip or two to where I'm not always listening. What's that noise? What's this? What's that? Is something going to go wrong? You're going way too slow. I'm passing you in a house car for God's sakes. Ready to already, I need to pack it up. I'm leaving in a couple days on a, on a holiday trip. Spend time with family so there'll be some, uh, festive lights and all that happy Christmas kind of stuff. So I'm going to keep driving because I think I said it was further away from me than I wanted it to be. And luckily I had a friend that could take me down there. I'm going to buy lunch and fill the gas tank back up. But could have been much nicer to me. It could have been something really cheap or it could have been worse. So it is what it is, but for some reason I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very relieved to finally be to be back in this and uh, ready for the next travels and, and at least ready for to look out and see it sitting in the driveway, calling to me to go for a trip, saying, "Dude, I'm ready. Let's go do something. Let's go see something we haven't seen before. Let's go see something we already seen." So I'm just going to drive for a little bit and, and let my imagination run wild with me to see if I hear anything good or bad, and then uh, I'll come back. Okay, I'm just passing the point where I was sitting and waiting for a tow truck. 
when this all started a month ago. So we're cruising along at 62, 63, according to GPS, according to Elf Boy. And uh, yeah. Everything seems fine other than he's he's needing some cleaning. There's some cobwebs in there. Alright, enough for now again. So I'm happy. I think Eddie's running well. Had some hills, ups and down hills, and everything seems fine. Um, I know that sharing stuff like this opens me up to, and anybody who shares stuff like this, it opens you up to the people that are going to say, you should have done this, or you should have done that, or you paid too much, or you got a great deal, or whatever it is. Um, I think all in all it worked out as well as it could work out. Things cost what they cost. I'm, I'm happy that I paid half the price of what I would have paid for a Jasper. And like I've been told recently, Jasper does a great warranty, but lately they've been doing more and more fighting with people, you know, making, making attempts to say, well, whatever the failure was, that wasn't our fault. So this gave me a, a year and 12,000 miles and the warranty is there's a group of uh, transmission repair things like a conglomerate and most reputable shops are part of that so apparently this warranty will work with that. Hopefully I never have to find out about whether the warranty was good or not. And I guess it's a little comforting also to be told that and he didn't he didn't have any need to try to make me feel better but he, he tended to be pretty sure that I didn't miss any warning signs that it just went so I guess I'll try to wrap this up by saying for those of you out there with RVs similar situations your car whatever um, if, service your vehicles make sure you do your preventative maintenance I thought I had done pretty well um, if you don't remember the last time you changed a transmission fluid, just change it. Get a change. So, you know, every couple years change a transmission fluid. It can't hurt. I don't know if I can say that's why this all happened, because I've changed it. But, what the hell, it's not a bad thing to check, right? I will also say that I know it's going to be a little while before I'm not listening for stuff. And when I get to a video and it strikes my mind that I'm like, hey, I don't listen for problems anymore, I'll let you know. But I think like with most people, when you have something bad happen, you're going to be leery for a little while. But I think Cousin Eddie's running great. Just some people will get out of my way. Got trapped here. But Eddie is back on the road. I'm ready for more travels and adventures and boring YouTube videos for you to watch. And until then, have a great and wonderful day. The driveway looks better with Eddie back in it, and I had a really great meal at Pramanti Brothers, paying back my friend for taking me.